Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. Now in today's we're going to look at a nice routine that I'm always using in my coaching sessions here, where we're going to learn about how the cue ball moves around the table. So we're going to learn about top spin, how stun shots work, screw shots. But just before getting to this video, I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that's subscribed to the channel. We've actually hit over 100,000 subscribers now, and I never thought that was going to be possible. So thank you to everybody for your support. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing because there's loads more free content coming on this channel. Okay, so we've got this nice little routine set up here, and I've got a red on the blue spot, and then I've got a red on the pink spot, and a red either side. Now, I'm using these reds here as obstacles to manoeuvre the cue ball around. So, we can try and cannon into them later, and I'll show you that, but first of all, we're just going to use them to move the cue ball around. Now, you're going to see exactly where to put the cue ball so that you can make a mark on the table like I have done here. You can measure it, and then you can have a go at this in your own club. And then we're going to try and guess what's happening with different spins on the cue ball. So if I pop this ball with maximum top spin, so I'm playing maximum top spin at a medium pace, where do you think the cue ball's going? So you can have a look. So that's with the head cam as well. So have a look. So where do you think the cue ball is going? So if I get up off the shot, if you were to guess there, would it be cue ball A, would it be cue ball B, or cue ball C? What do you think? Okay, so you've got your guess. Let's play one and see what happens with the cue ball. So I've got to go right to the top of the cue ball, maximum top. Nice and smooth, hit the shot. And then, what do you think there? What was your guess like with guessing top spin? Were you correct? Is that where the cue ball was going? And we're gonna talk about in detail exactly how this all works um, and how you can predict this a bit easier. So, let's do a screw back shot and you're gonna guess again. So if I did maximum screw on this shot, what do you think? So let's have a look, so I'm down on the shot again. So obviously I'm going right to the bottom of the cue ball now. I always play what looks like a little bit of left-hand side. It doesn't affect the way the cue ball moves left and right when you're playing side here. It's just some players play what we call helping side on the shot. So what do you think? Is the cue ball going to hit cue ball A, B or C if I play a screw shot? So let's try it. So we're going right down to the bottom of the cue ball, playing a nice screw shot. So what do you think? Were you close there to predicting where the cue ball was going? Right, and now let's play a stun shot. So if I play a stun shot, what do you think? Cue ball A, B or C? So I'm playing a positive stun shot here, just normal pace. So what do you think? Which cue ball is it going to go down? Which line is it taking? So let's have a look. So let's play the stun. So what do you think? Did you manage to get those, those lines correct there? So what we can do now, let me explain some of how this works. So when the cue ball comes off the object ball, it actually always comes off at 90 degrees to the potting line. So let's put some graphics on. So we can see that obviously this red has got a pot into this pocket. That's the line to the pocket. And then when the cue ball first hits that red ball, it actually comes off at 90 degrees. Now that is only happening for fractions of a second, but it's important that we know that is happening because that then gives us an idea of what different spins will do to the cue ball. So, when I then play top spin, what happens is the cue ball will come off at 90 degrees and then very quickly, because I've put all that top spin momentum on the cue ball, it will start to pull it away from that 90 degree line and it will move off with top. So if we have a look at the, what the cue ball does, and we should slow it down a little bit. So we can see that the cue ball yeah, gets pulled off its 90 degree line and, and accelerates with top spin. If we play screw back, the same is happening. It's going to move off the red to the left, obviously. It wants to go at 90 degrees first, but then I've got a lot of backspin on the shot, and that's what's going to pull the cue ball back towards me. So all that backspin, and then you pop the ball, and it very quickly manages to grip on the cloth and pull the cue ball back towards me. Now, when you play a stun shot, it holds the cue ball on that 90 degree line. So if I play stun, which in this case, if I play it firm, and I play just below centre and play my stun shot, it'll hold it along the 90 degree line, which is going to be very close to hitting this red or maybe just inside it, because obviously the cue ball is hitting just before the red, isn't it? And then travelling along at 90 degrees. So if we go at, again, stun shot, so we're going just below centre, nice and positive, hit the shot. And then we see, yeah, the cue ball will travel right down the centre of the table. So let's have a look at some of the other effects that are happening when we're using this routine. 
Right, so now we're going to explore the difference that power makes on these shots here. So let's play this first shot. We're going to play top spin. I'm going to turn the power right up to almost maximum power. So I'm going to pop this ball here right at the top of the cue ball again. Make sure you get the pot really firm. So, and can you see that time, the way the cue ball actually hit into this red? It didn't manage to get on the, the outside of that red. And that's because what's happening there is the cue ball is spending too long on the 90 degree line. It's hitting the ball, it's coming off at 90 degrees. We know that always happens for fractions of a second. And it's trying to wheel spin with a top spin. And it took too long because I hit it so hard to drag it off the 90 degree line. Let's see what happens if we do screw shot. So same thing, I'm going to turn the power right up. Screw shot. We know where it originally went on a screw shot. So let's go right at the bottom of the white and then, yeah, really turn the power up. And you can see there that the cube ball took too long to grab again off the 90 degree line. It actually went in between the two reds. So that's incredibly important to know the effects of that power making a difference because the cue ball is trying to, to grip on the cloth. Let's see what happens if we turn the power right the way down. So let's go quite soft here. I'm going to go to the top of the white, softer than I did the, the first shots at the beginning of this video. So I'm calling this like a, a three power. So right at the top, three power. So the cue ball basically found its same line there. By the time it hit the, the red, it was just rolling along with some top spin and it found the same line. Let's see what happens if we do the same shot at the screw position. So we're going to go right to the bottom of the cue ball, but we're going to go slowly, about a three out of 10. Should put some chalk on so we don't miss cue. So we're going to go right to the bottom of the cue ball and then three out of 10. So can you see the way the cue ball there has actually just stayed on the 90 degree line? It's going down the center of the table. And that's because by the time the white got to the red, it wasn't really rotating backwards very much because I just didn't hit it hard enough. So there was no way I could make it screw onto this part of the cushion here. So being aware of the power making a difference there is very, very important. And let's explore what we can do now with power and maneuvering the cue ball around further. Right, so let's move the cue ball around. Let's say, obviously, I know where we're going with maximum top. I know where we're going with maximum screw back. And then I can do in between those two extremes and I can start to move the cue ball around. So let's say I want to bring the cue ball down this line here. So I know that maximum top was taking me over here at a medium speed. I know that the stun shot hits into that red or takes me down the center of the table. So if I go up from there to the center of the cue ball, that should take me in between those two reds. So let's try that. So I'm just moving the tip just in between those two points to make the cue ball just have less of a stun effect and less of a top spin effect. And it's kind of that shot there is a stun run through. That's what you've just played. Lots of people think that you're playing a stun run through just on a straight shot, but obviously you can do those on angles as well. A stun run through is just when you've got some amount of stun and some amount of run through, which is exactly what we had there. So let's say we want to bring the cue ball through the other gap. So we know that maximum screw is here. We know that this is minus one at a medium pace. So let's go minus two on the cue ball, a little bit further down. We're just going to go below where we played stun, maybe minus three. So we're going to go a little bit further down and that's going to allow me to find that other gap. So nice and confidently. And I found that gap. If I wanted to make sure I miss that red a bit further away, let's just go just a fraction lower on the cue ball. As I say, that was only minus two, so I only just missed the red. Let's go further down and I should miss the red by a bit further. So make sure you get the pot. There we go. And I was just a bit further away from the red there. So you just have to know that those are the two extremes. Lots of people get confused here and think that they're moving the cue ball over in that direction or over in that direction, using a little bit to side. And it's actually just completely up and down the center of the cue ball. You know where the, the extreme with top is and you know where the extreme with backspin is. And we can do all of the little things in between. So thanks a lot for watching everybody. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to give it a like. If you're new to the channel and you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing. That just really helps me to keep all these instructional videos coming regularly. For anyone that's interested in any personal one-to-one -one training sessions, I'm working on this very table, helping players to improve their game all the time. 
So if you look in the description box below, you'll see all my details there. Get in touch, and I'd love to help you personally with your game. And as always, I'll catch you all in the next video. Cheers.